Hello, I am Jon Stoika and this is Join Work with Scott Schenker. This presentation is about what we believe is the future of cloud computing, which we call sky computing. 60 years ago, John McCarthy said the vision of utility computing. He said, computation may someday be organized as a public utility, just as a telephone system is a public utility. Each subscriber needs to pay only for the capacity that he actually uses, but he has access to all programming language characteristics of a very large system. 45 years later, with the emergence of Amazon Web Services, public clouds took a big step forward realizing this vision. Public clouds provide developers access to virtually unlimited resources, diverse hardware, and charge the users only for, for what they are using. However, the public cloud is not a utility yet. Every cloud provides slightly different services and APIs. This is unlike electric utility, where a consumer doesn't know who is producing electricity. Also, this is unlike the internet, where a user doesn't know which ISPs carry her traffic. This leads to a fragmented market. This fragmentation is driven by the desire of each cloud provider to differentiate itself by providing proprietary services and increasingly proprietary hardware. This fragmentation is exacerbated by data gravi gravity. For most clouds, it is free to get the data in, but expensive to get the data out. Indeed, to get out a byte of data costs as much as storing that byte for several months in the cloud. Fragmentation can also have a negative impact on innovation. It is hard to take advantage of innovation across clouds. For example, an AWS user cannot use TPUs unless she becomes a Google customer. It is even harder to take advantage of innovation outside clouds. For example, you cannot use Cerebras AI chips unless at least one cloud adopts them. The key question we are asking ourselves in this work is the following. What it will take to turn cloud computing into utility computing. Similarly to the way the internet brought together a bunch of disparate networks, we hope the sky will bring together a bunch of disparate clouds. We hope to do so not by changing the clouds, by providing abstraction layers on top like IP in the internet. Today, clouds are siloed. Each cloud comes with its own API, service ecosystem, and application market. So what we want to do is to turn this picture into the sky. The sky has three components. The first is a compatibility layer. This is a cloud agnostic layer, which enables a user to take an application developed on one cloud and run it on a different cloud without changes. The second is an intercloud layer. This layer abstracts away the clouds. An application running on top of this layer doesn't need to know what cloud it is running on. The third component is a peer agreement between clouds that will allow clouds to exchange data for free, thus obviating data gravity. So why do you want Sky to happen? What are its benefits? Well, first, it can provide easy access to new capabilities. For example, if one cloud provides access to a new hardware, then any Sky application can use that hardware. Second, it can provide better security. For example, one can distribute trust across multiple clouds to eliminate a single point of attack. It can also provide better reliability. Today, clouds are still experiencing experience major outages. By leveraging multiple clouds, a Sky application can mask such outages. It can also provide better performance by either aggregating resources across clouds or by using the best cloud for the job. For example, it can transparently use Google Cloud to take advantage of TPUs for training. And finally, it can provide lower cost by using the cheapest cloud for the job. Next, let me argue why we believe Sky will happen, why we believe Sky is inevitable. First, let me start with a case for compatibility layer. More and more companies are now providing third-party services on top of multiple clouds. Some examples are Databricks, Snowflakes, and Confluent. 
They do so because their customers ask for multi-cloud support, either to avoid lock-in or to avoid running on a cloud that has competing products and services. Unfortunately, this leads to an M times N problem where each of the M applications needs to have an implementation for each of the N clouds. Furthermore, providing support for a new cloud does not come cheap. For example, it took Databricks, which originally ran only on AWS, many tens of person years to add support for Azure. Now, when you are looking at this M times M pattern, I'm sure many of you will come up immediately with a solution. Add a level of indirection at an intermediate layer. In the internet, this is the IP. In the case of Sky, this is a compatibility layer. This reduces the M times N problem to a far more tra tractable M plus N problem. That is, every application written against the compatibility API will run on any cloud implementing this API. The compatibility layer, it's already emerging. This is in large part driven by the open source projects. Over the past two decades, open source projects have become the de facto standard at many levels of the software stack. Examples include Linux for operating systems, Kubernetes for cluster orchestration, Docker for application packaging, Apache Spark for data processing, and so on. These open source systems can play the role of the compatibility layer. Just build your application on top of these systems and then deploy and manage the systems in any cloud you, are, you want your application to run in. And if you do not want to manage these systems, you could use the corresponding managed services provided by third parties, such as Cloudera for Apache Hadoop, Confluent for Apache Spark, for Apache Kafka, and Databricks for Apache Spark. Or you can even use a managed version of the systems provided by the public cloud themselves. For example, every major cloud provides today a hosted version of Kubernetes. Finally, in addition to open source compatibility layers, we are also seeing closed or semi-open compatibility layers emerging. Two examples are Azure Arc and Google's Anthos. In this case, a cloud provides some of the soft is software stack on another cloud. The hope is that it will entice developers to write application on top of, say, Arc, and eventually this application will migrate to Azure since Arc will run best on Azure. In addition to compatibility layer, we are also seeing early signs of the intercloud layer emerging in an ad hoc fashion. For example, companies like Databricks and Snowflake give a customer the ability to access data of every other customer irrespective of the cloud, subject to permissions. Another example is BigQuery Omni, Omni. Now it is possible to use BigQuery, a Google product, to transparently query data stored in AWS and soon in Azure. One interesting aspect of BigQuery Omni is that it is built on top of Anthos, the Google's compatibility layer I mentioned earlier. So how can Sky enable innovation? Well, here are some examples. Hardware providers might decide to create their own clouds. For example, NVIDIA could create GPU specialized clouds. Now, since NVIDIA is not specialized in storage, it can partner with a storage optimized cloud. In this example, Samsung, the largest SSD producer in the world. This way, NVIDIA users could have access to cheap state-of-the-art storage. This partnership could include free peering, so it's free to move the data between clouds, and DIVA even dark or lit fiber connectivity. This is pretty much the same kind of connectivity that a cloud provider deploys between its data centers today. Sky could also open the door for small vendors. For example, Cerebras could make available their AI chip by installing a few hundreds of servers in colocation data centers by partnering with a company like Equinox, which owns over 200 data centers globally. Any Sky, Sky user can then have access and try the new hardware. If successful with their pilot, Cerebras could easily expand. Another type of clouds that could emerge are nation clouds. 
This is very much like today some countries have their own ISPs. And of course, existing clouds could also join the sky. In summary, we believe the sky is the next logical step in the evolution of the cloud. However, many questions remain on how to get to the sky. We just hope to help make the skies happen sooner and in the right way.